Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I keep deer out of my garden. And we'll, we'll cover a couple ideas and some of the things I've tried. And I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what my property actually looked like before I terraformed it into what you see now. So when I originally moved here, none of those trees you see in the background were here. None of them. This was a big open yard all the way to the back. It was open to the farm in the back where all the corn grows. It was open to the farm in the front of my property where all the corn and soybeans grow. And so everything was open. The neighbor that used to live in a house over here next to me, he was an old guy and he died now. But when he was here, he used to feed the uh, deer that were migrating through this area every year for 20 something years, maybe even 30 years. In the back here used to be partly a, I believe, either a peach and apple tree or just apple tree. There's still a few apple trees left here. I might pick some of those apples at the end of the year next year just so I can do a review on some of the native apples that grow around here or old time farm apples still growing. He used to go back there and pick all those apples up off the ground and he used to make trails that went through and onto his property and he'd feed all the deer in the back and he used to enjoy watching the deer. What that did was, is it created a migration pattern of deer that would travel from the mountains up here. As you can see, way back there, there's a mountain. So from the mountains up there, all the deer used to come down, travel down here, eat those apples, and then continue into the corn and so, so on, all the way into the mountains in the back. And so now the deer have a very well-established migration pattern that included my yard in that pattern, probably primarily my yard. So I needed to make changes. In order for me to change that, I had to actually terraform the land here in, in order for me to make that change. But before that, none of those trees, none of these trees, nothing that you see here was here. I made all of this except for these very large trees in the very back. I actually did all the planting, what you see. And I needed to do that in order for me to make my garden to what it is now. And I don't want to keep rambling about that, but I, I want you to understand, in order for you to actually change a deer problem, depending on if your problem has a deer migration pattern through your property, you're going to have to make some very, very serious changes. So originally, when I first moved here and there were no trees, I had all raised beds all here. There were about maybe a dozen raised beds and I would grow my tomatoes and my peppers and all that, that kind of stuff. Greenhouse wasn't fully built yet. In fact, that didn't get built until finally the end of 2012, but I've been living here since the end of 2008, 2009 when I first moved here. And that's when I started growing immediately when I first got here and I started gardening and all of that stuff. The pond wasn't even here either. So before all of that happened, the yard was open gardens were basically all raised beds and what was happening was is not only the deer were just starting to destroy and chew my tomato plants literally to the ground overnight but I also had rabbits golfers groundhogs foxes dogs cats and every other animal in the world would literally come into my property and absolutely destroy my garden I'd be lucky if I ended up with one tomato at the end of the year and one pepper I'd be full of joy I got one pepper and one tomato that's how bad it was here so I started doing all kinds of things started looking up and watching YouTube videos and and doing all kinds of research on how to change this and I started trying all of these things I wrapped it with fencing that definitely reduced the problem by at least 60% right there but it was a lot of work couldn't maintain the plants because once the plants start growing inside of a raised bed that has a cage all the way around it that's four to five feet tall you can't get inside the raised bed to actually pick fruits and maintain them it became a problem because now i couldn't get in there and pick off the blighted leaves and maintain the plants and just it was now a new disaster so what I ended up doing was I figured it's time to build a greenhouse. So I built a greenhouse thinking that would solve the deer problem. Well, of course, it, it that did, but it didn't solve a problem for the other rodents. So I turned all of these raised beds at some point after the greenhouse was built. I turned all those raised beds into one garden area like you see here. And I figured let's concentrate on just this outdoor garden and see how we do with this. So I started with my fencing here 
and we started with that and I still seem to have deer problem. They didn't necessarily jump the fence to go in here to get to my tomato plants and chew them to the ground. They would literally mow the top of my plants off everywhere they can walk. Part of that problem was due to me having a pond. The deer now found out I had a pond, so this is where they started coming to to drink water. And when I came in here to drink water, they would walk up the side here, and as they walked up the side here, they literally mowed down everything that was within their walking path and wherever they could reach over and chew. And that became a problem too. So we needed to go even further than that. So I started hanging those metal pie plates, the aluminum pie plates you get from pie crusts. I started hanging those around. I started taking the aluminum cans. You cut them in half and then you open them up and you let them spin around in the air at night. And they, they, held, they worked for a little while. All that stuff worked for a little while. But after a while, the deer became hip to that and they realized that that's just metal hanging there and it's not gonna harm them. So they started ignoring that. So that didn't work. I was gonna try the automated sprinklers that work off of motion detection. I was gonna try that, but I've heard that those things fail and those things could be running water literally all night while your water bill is shooting up through the roof and I, I just didn't wanna deal with that. So I need to now take a new step. Next step was I needed to plant trees across my property. So I planted all these trees, they're called nigris. Nigris, or you could go with green giants, I would have went with the green giants. If you're gonna plant a privacy fence with trees, I would suggest strongly that you go with the green giants and not the nigris, because the nigris are very sensitive and they're not deer resistant, and I'm gonna tell you why. So I planted all my trees here. There were six foot tall trees, I paid almost 10,000 to get this whole property planted out. Deer problem got even worse, because now the deer, I didn't know this, but the deer eat the nigras like you eat lettuce. This, they love the nigras more than anything you can possibly put. They like this tree more than they like corn, believe it or not. And so what they did was is they started coming down and chewing all my bottoms of my trees down till there was nothing left but a stick in the middle. So now we had another problem. I thought the trees were gonna solve the deer problem you know, I was assuming that the trees will grow, it'll get big enough, they'll form a nice, nice enough canopy, the deer won't want to pass through it, and then that eventually solved the deer problem. Uh, no, it made it worse. Had I gone with green giants, it probably would have solved the problem because deer generally don't eat the green giants, and the green giants really do form a much thicker wall that you can't even see through. So I probably would have had better success doing that. It was recommended to me from the tree company that did all the plantings and I didn't do it. I went with the Nigers because I was able to get six foot tall and the Green Giants, I would have only been able to get three and a half or 30 inch tall plants for the same price. And I, I was like, I'd rather have the six foot tall trees, right? Because, you know, six foot tall trees are gonna be big quick and they did grow quite quick, but that made it even worse, the problem. So now I had to take another step in order for me to keep the deer from eating my trees and getting into my property. So the next thing I did is I wrapped my property on the outside of the tree on the neighbor's side from all the way over to there where the uh, garage is, where the sheds are over there. And I wrapped it all the way down around my property, you know, down that way around my property and all the way back up. This is about an acre of land you're looking at. So I literally almost wrapped three quarters of an acre of land with that fencing right there. Same thing I put in my garden. And that fencing is about four feet tall. I hung it about six inches above the ground so I can get an even, you know, pattern. I didn't want it to, to bend it and buckle it because it kind of buckles as you go down. So if you raise it up six inches, you get a nice clean look on the other side. And that's what we went with. And I wrapped my entire property with that fencing all the way around. I don't remember how many rolls of wire fencing I used, a lot. And then I just tied them to the trees and that was the end of it. That literally solved about 90% of the problem. Here, I'll show you the back. The back is kind of, you know, they're, they're, it's, they're leaning over. I don't have any posts holding it up or anything. I just nailed it to some trees. It's not the back that the deer were coming into. All right, it's, it's not the back over here. The deer are come, they were coming in from this area a lot of times, but even a small piece of fencing like this, they're gonna be reluctant to get in here. They don't wanna come in your yard if they see something like that. So it, it solved about 90% of the problem, but I still had 10% of a problem because the deer were still wanting to get back here to drink in my pond. So what I had to do now was take a, a, a final step 
and really solidify the situation and really lock everything out. So finally, from where the, let's see here. So from where the garage is over there, forwards, I put fencing up all the way to the, uh, to the uh, property line up there. And I did the same thing on the other side. And so not only did I put the fencing up that way, but where my driveway is, where my van is over there, where my driveway is, I put fencing across my driveway so I can lock the driveway and close it off at night. Now, I don't need to do it anymore because the deer finally stopped migrating through my property. I broke the migration pattern. But if had I not done that and really go to that extent, I would have never gotten rid of the deer problem because it's going to take several generations of deer before you break that migration pattern. And so now if the deer want to migrate, they'll just go through my neighbor's property or here. They're not going to come directly down to my property, want to drink out of the pond or anything else in my yard. So literally the deer problem has literally disappeared because of all these measures I took. Simply hanging pie plates and using fox urine as a, I think there's like a you know, repellent for deer. You could put that down and all this other stuff. And, you know, I was throwing firecrackers at them at night in the middle of the night when I'd see them come out. I'd wait for them and I threw firecrackers out my window and that would scare them, but they keep coming back. There's no way to actually get rid of them unless you do what I did here. Now, if I still get deer in here, it would be very rare occasion. And they would know that walking into a, a situation like this is probably not in their best interest and they're gonna be very reluctant to come down here. Most of the deer now don't even know there's a pond. So they only get down so far and then they co go, either go back out the way they went or they'll run straight through the property and jump over the fence to get out. And the other side of that fence is a big drop. It's about a 15 foot drop down to my neighbor's property. So they're not gonna wanna come in here. If they do, it was by accident. It also solved the problem with dogs in the area because a lot of people around here own dogs. And one of the problems is, is that their dogs, everybody's dogs seem to get loose and they run through my yard, everybody else's yard. And it became a really serious problem as far as gardening goes because the dogs would go running right through the garden and a couple times uh, digging in my garden and, and tearing things up. It, it was upsetting. So we eliminated the dog problem and we also eliminated the deer problem by doing everything I did. And I know this video is kind of long, but you need to understand what lengths I actually went through in order for me to eliminate that as a problem. So I've had to go through a lot of work to do this. This is the only way to actually get rid of deer off of your property. If you're seeing deer come into your property, it's more than likely there's a migration pattern or they discovered something in your, on your property where there's steady food or water, like a pond, that they're gonna wanna keep going onto your property too. And you need to break that pattern so they don't know it's here. Now, in a couple of occasions, I've even had bear on my property. My neighbor had a bear sleeping on his porch in the back a couple times when he was still alive. He had a bear sleeping on the back or just, you know, sitting there on the back of his porch a few times. And well, we ain't got no bears in this property because it's gonna be difficult for the bear to get in here and he really has no reason to if he doesn't smell anything like, you know, garbage or food for him to wanna to break his way into here. It, 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 this fence will not hold back beer. Uh, bears, not beer. <laughs> it will not hold back bears, but it will deter them from coming on here. And so far, I'm doing pretty good. We also have coyote problems as well as foxes and none of these things come into my property. The worst thing I see in my property now are skunks, possums, sometimes you see raccoons. We got birds, chipmunks, mice, voles, moles, and that's about it. Once in a while, in a rare while, you'll see a mink, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll see a polecat. But other than that, you're generally not going to see anything else in here because I made it difficult for animals to come onto my property and invade my garden space and my growing area and just my way of life that I'm trying to live out here. So if you're homesteading or you're trying to look for ways to preserve the way you do things like growing your vegetables and trees and fruit trees and things like that, you're going to need to start considering measures like I did here. You're going to need to start considering investing into securing your perimeter as much as you can from animals like deers or bears or cougars or bobcats or anything that you may have a problem with in your area. All right, so hopefully that answers, one of my viewers actually asked me that question, so hopefully that answers the question as to how 
do I keep deer out of my garden? That is what I had to do in order for me to keep deer, not only out of my garden, but out of my property because the deer weren't just eating my garden. They were chewing my grapevines to the ground. All of those apple trees and pear trees and peach trees and all the stuff I had growing over there, they were chewed to the ground so many times that these trees will never fully recover. They always grow like a bush. So I, I have to cut the trees down because the deer would chew those trees down every year to the ground. And then the plant comes up the next year as a, a bush. It'll spring up like four sprigs will come up and it never really develops a trunk. They destroyed all my fruit trees and everything. They destroyed just about all my beautiful privacy hedges that I have here. So it wasn't just a garden, it was a lot of things. The deer were a very serious problem over here. And so I took drastic measures and that's how I remediated it. So again, hope this answers some of your questions as to how do you deal with deer. And I hope you liked the video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.